Sunday morning. Let me know if you can hear me well, see me well, and let's get started. And while we are gathering and checking everything, I want to mention my Patreon. So if you want to support me with $1, maybe $2, you can go and support me on my Patreon. Okay, yeah, I actually thought about creating my own course. I just don't know about the, exactly the the way to do that. Is it should be something pitched live? I mean, online, but still with my presence, or maybe it's just some set of videos. I don't know. Good morning, everyone. Is it working? Do you see me? Hey. Well, I hope you do. I hope you do. And well, I, I just need to change my screen right now. Yeah. So now you, you'll just find out why I'm going to be changing my screen. So it's almost a hundred, <laughs> almost a hundred stream now. And I learned to do this effect now. Yeah, I'll do this one more time. Isn't it cool? This is cooler than all the shaders I've done and all the animations. What's up? Okay, so yesterday, yeah, yesterday I did this uh, GIF. It was inspired by uh, by Joe, by his crazy, beautiful GIF too. Yeah, greetings from Ukraine too. So it was beautiful, it inspired me to recreate it with a 3GS and, well, with a JavaScript, essentially. And I did my take on this one and it looked a bit different, but I think it's kind of cool to explain how I've done this one. And that's what we're going to be creating today. I'm going to use Canvas Sketch for this one. Oh, yeah, yeah, change my screen again. I keep forgetting about that. Yep, I'm in Kiev, Ukraine at my home. All right, so uh, let's start with the canvas sketch. Canvas sketch. And canvas sketch has a built-in function to create a template for the 3GS template. Yeah, just like that. So I'll create the folder. But shit, crazy animation. It's not that crazy, but yeah. I can name folder whatever I want, right? So I'll just drag it here and then put the common line and create the canvas sketch. And yeah, of course, I can find three. Привет, Victor. And then I can run How do you run it? Mm. I think I can just create a new one. It's easier than looking for a new common. Okay, I have 3JS installed probably. Yeah, it's working good now. Oh, I think they changed something. It used to be a cube. But hope it wouldn't change anything in my animation. Hmm. I just recently updated the kind of sketch, and yeah, it's probably the reason. So we have here. Okay, I'll zoom in. Any difference? Well, kind of sketch is best to do gifs. That's it. Gifs, gifs. Okay. So it just it has almost the same camera, maybe a bit different camera position. It has some, I don't know, sphere geometry inside of it, and it has some update loop. Well, that's it. Of course, it's not really, maybe it's not really suitable for production. You have to build it, you have to compile it the other way, but otherwise it's just good enough to run the animation because we have everything in place. So let's start by creating a spiral. So I need to I need a spiral for this one. Obviously, we have a spiral right here. To do this, I will create um, 
tube geometry. So there's tube geometry constructor in the 3JS already built in. And it's pretty easy to use. And I'll just copy the last part. So essentially I need to create the curve and then when I have the curve I can create the tube following this curve. And this is pretty pretty damn powerful thing that is built in into the 3JS. So where the hell should I put that? Okay, somewhere where I have the sphere geometry. Okay, I found it. I still have this red. Let's change it to normal material because I like it more. It looks... Yeah, sphere. Sphere with the mesh normal material. Okay, so I need to create the other geometry now. Um, the geometry is tube geometry with some kind of path, which is a curve. And then uh, what that should be the, the, the precision of the curve and then the radius probably and then the segments following the curve and then the open or closed tube is that, right? Something like that. Let's see. They have a really nice description there in the 3JS website. I'll just put it this top all the others yeah so we have the the path which is should be the curve object and then tubular segments and then radius and radial segments okay so i think i need the curve to be quite um, uh, small so the radius of the curve should be real real small but the detailization of the curve the like the precision which is uh, Tubal segments must be like something big, so it's gonna be 100. And then I just need to put the uh, radial segments, right? Yeah, radial segments, and it should be something like I don't know 30, should be enough. We would see it as a rounded tube anyway with the 30. How long am I working as a developer? Oh, you don't want to know that. Since 2004, I guess, yeah, started doing HTML and CSS. Yeah, so uh, I have this geometry. I don't really have any path object yet. I have this math, um, math basic material, which I don't need. Uh, I also have this mesh creating, which I already have here with the geometry and material. So I don't need this sphere geometry anymore. I need only this tube geometry. And I don't need this mesh added to the scene because I'm already adding it right there. So I need to create the path. Um, let's create some kind of num equals 100. And then no, no, no. I'll calculate the x, y, z coordinates. x is going to be equal mass sine. <laughs> is it similar programming language? <laughs> I don't know. At least it's a markup language, so it's still a language. Mm. Yeah, so I need to divide it by num and then I'll multiply it by double pi. I will be creating a circle with a tube right now. So this is going to be am, and then y is going to be equal cosine am, and then z is going to be equal um, zero. It's going to be just a plain circle. Hey, man, rocket. <laughs> Okay, so it's just the basic stuff to create a circle. And then I need to create the curve out of it. I think 3JS has already built in object at small curve 3. Yeah, it's a three dimensional curve. And I should just feed an array of the three vector three objects. So I'll create something like this dots and dots push. XYZ. So it's just creating an array of uh, dots in a 3D space, which I can connect with a curve now, which I can create a curve from. So I can just do this 
and it's gonna be curve probably. So let my curve equal dots. Well, and that's it. Should be curve now. And it, it, sh it should have been a mount actually. Like in a mount, we <laughs> traveled through the dots from starting from zero to the num. Actually, I think it's better to use a map function for this one. It should be somewhere. Yeah, it's called map range. And how do you install it? Like this. Map range from math. And I'm getting an error because on line 51 I did something stupid. Yeah, I copy pasted too much code. Now we're just missing the canvas sketch part. Uh, well, let's install it. It's just a helper object to use some functions. Oh no, I will need to restart the whole thing now. All right. I already have a snippet in my Alfred workflow. And what's that sketches? And let's run the animation and it should be just fine now. What the hell is wrong with you? Let's install the damn animation. What? Mm. Why? Okay, I, I, okay. I just copy pasted the wrong thing, and that's why I didn't run. Well, the harder part in this stream is going to be installing dependencies. What the hell? Why it cannot find this model? Okay, fuck that. I don't need my branch. I have no idea why it's not. It's not getting this my branch. There we go. It just works fine with the mount. <sighs> <laughs> okay, so we got a circle. We're missing the last point, but I don't care about that. We're not going to be making circles today. And uh, well, that's it. We can build any kind of curve. We can just add. Oof, what would you like me to add? Mass sign amount multiplied by three. And this is all something small. It's going to be. <laughs> I think it's. it looks like a squircle, right? <laughs> I have no idea what I've done here, but it's just some some something weird. We can do a 30 here. It should be more fun. Yeah. Something stupid. And you know what? To make it smooth, we can make more. Okay. Now it's smooth. Fucked up curve. Well, anyway, it's not what I'm doing here. So the first I wanted to do... Um, Well, share the link with me. I don't know which human I'm talking to about. Space and folder name, well, maybe, maybe. I don't care. Let's use, let's use it without the uh, without the map range function. Right. So we created the tube geometry. Next thing I would like to create, I would like to create the spiral. There are different kinds of spiral. The spiral I would like to use, and well, actually, that I used actually in my in my GIF. I wouldn't pretend that I didn't know about that. Is the logarithmic spiral, and it has a pretty, 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 <laughs> yeah, pretty good formula about it. So it's a cosine of some theta angle and multiplied by the exponents with that angle. So let's do this uh, curve here. So z is gonna stay, gonna be staying zero, but x and y should be something different there. So because I know the numbers, I will try to get as close as possible to the actual numbers I've been creating. 
So I need to map this. I actually need, <laughs> I actually needed the map function, but I can do this mapping without map range function, without any dependencies. So I think, if I remember correctly, I need this value to run from minus eighty to something like forty, plus forty. And to map this function, this range is one hundred and twenty. So if I wanna do this range, I will do minus eighty plus uh, 120 multiplied by the amount because well and i should remove this one so this value between 0 and 1 this value between 0 and 1 now this value between 0 and 120 and that means it's going to be running between uh, yeah between minus 80 and plus 40 this is exactly what i need so then i will need to calculate the x and y coordinates according to the logarithmic spiral form formula and that's already built in thing to do that I'm just doing the power of the 2.7 value this is exactly what I need and I think I will just uh, I think I better call this an angle because this is actually a, an angle just an angle for the spiral and then here an angle as well and this should do something but let's see what exactly so it does a spiral but it's a, it's a really big one it's a huge one so i think i need some coefficient i need to put some values to make it smaller so first of all i need some small value for the exponent and i think it's going to be something like this Okay, multiply it. I'll try to guess and then we'll try to figure out the numbers. So now you see that the spiral is actually starting to look like a spiral because previously the exponent was growing too fast. Now it's kind of medium fast. I think I think I would also like to make my curve a bit more thin. Yeah, there we go. Have a thin curve now. I also think I need more points here so it looks smoother yeah now we have this curve i also think uh, i have too many too many turns in my spiral to make less turns i would just this is the sign function which is related to the number of turns i'm doing i'm gonna do something like this yeah now we have less turns now it looks more like a beautiful spiral already be even bigger something like this so it's already looks like a beautiful spiral next thing i would like to do is there a next thing at all or am i done here maybe just do it a little smaller let's try this yeah yeah i i i think i would need to make it smaller just to fit the whole geometry into my screen because previously well, well, it was just one, like major part of the geometry was outside of the screen, which I didn't like. Yeah, I think this is pretty much it. Now we created the curve and we fit the curve into the screen. All good. So now let's try to, now let's try to do something cool. I think I would need shaders to do something cool. And I'll just take my default shaders from my from my previous streams. It's gonna be shader, just a fragment. I don't need this. Just the fragment and vertex shaders. The default ones. This one is actually just showing UVs and the vertex well doing nothing. Uh, so root and center because uh, because of the because of my curve I have a different amount of dots in the center and, and, and on the edge and that's why it's not that smooth in the center because it's less less of a precision of my curve there to fix that you would need hey Alan to fix that you would need to create more dots more precision and to fiddle with them with the uh, spiral formula 
and maybe with the tube geometry too. You might you might want to create your own geometry which fits this task perfectly. We can even try to do this mesh rotation, uh, which axis z equals math pi multiplied by playhead. And let's see, will anything happen at all? Nothing happening because why? Playhead is not defined, of course. Still something is wrong. No, it's it's all capital, right? So what's wrong? Mesh, it's mesh. Is it mesh? I'm trying to do this right now. Okay, okay. I will create the course, but right now I just need to fix the thing. Why it's not rotating? Okay, let's see the playhead. It's always zero. Okay, maybe be that's because I didn't set duration three seconds yeah let's try to do that yeah because you don't have a playhead until you set the duration of the animation okay now we have the mm, it's double now we have the spiral it's rotating it's kind of a spiral it's not yet what it should be let's continue next thing i would like to do i want to extrude my shape I want to create this uh, spiral which gets bigger when it unfolds. So I'm, we'll create a pos equals position. And then I think at, at each point of my curve I have the normal already, normal vector. And that means that I can just extrude my tube with this normal vector. So I can just do something like new pos plus equals. Uh, normal multiplied by something and that's that something i think i have it in here because uvs is essentially the like the progress of my curve starting from the center it's actually the, almost the same as an angle because this angle also sets the progress this amount set the progress so this is kind of this amount inside the vertex shader so if I multiply this by something, I don't know, small, what's going to happen? My curve just gets bigger. It should get bigger, right? Oh yeah, I'm not rendering new boss yet. Let's see. Hmm. Something is not right. And what's that? So I'm adding a normal vector to each of the position and my tube should be actually getting bigger. Oh, because <laughs> Why would I expect this to work at all if I don't even have these shaders connected to my object? I just have this normal material here and I need shader material. So I'm just, I just expect my JavaScript to find out that, that I've been using the, <laughs> the right object this whole time, even though I haven't connected it. So I hope IDEs will work this way someday. So I don't need this mesh normal material and I, I need this and I will need to include so I'll need to import fragment from shader fragment and the same goes for the vertex. Will this even work? Yeah, text content of null, that's all right. Uh, 
So I need to create the material with those shaders. Uh, I will also make it use the playhead uniform. Const material. So now it's all good. Now I should see the UVs. Yeah. And I see my plane extruded, but it's too damn big now. Yeah. Now you can see that you can extrude this plane inside of the vertex shader. And it gets gets beautiful. Now we're not seeing normal material anymore, we're seeing the UVs now. And it's actually extruding like in a linear way, like it's the same extrusion for the whole curve. So as I mentioned, I need to multiply this by let's say let's just try to multiply it by the wrong part. And it's doing something crazy and not even beautiful. Alright, so let's multiply it by the right thing. So now we see the extrusion going, it's like getting bigger following the curve because the UV is getting bigger, because the UV X is getting bigger. And well, you could see the UV as a amount of the red color, UV X value. So I think I, 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 would, I could just play with the coefficient. I need, I need it to go to the zero. It's not going to the zero yet. So I think I would need to subtract something so it goes to exactly zero. So I'll make this coefficient. How do I go about creating this zero point? Okay. I'll multiply it by something small first. I think this was the right number that I used. Yeah, now it starts exactly, well, almost at the zero. And now I think I could. Uh, multiply this by something bigger now so it gets big enough yes, it gets closer it's not it's not it's not really a constant gap like the jaw had in his gif in his original gif but it's close enough it's close enough so to do the original gif you would need to be a bit more specific about the math not guessing those numbers and i think if i just subtract something small here I would get the zero value. It is getting too small. Mm. Oh yeah, I think I just nailed it. So yeah, this is curve. Of course, the precision is not real good in the center, but we don't really care about that because it is a big thing, and you don't really see the precision at the bottom. And if you if you do care about that, you could just make more turns in your spiral. So now we have this wonderful spiral, and I'm wondering why I'm not looking at the z at the x y z zero point. The camera position is this. Hmm. Well, anyway, it's close enough. Still wondering why it's not in the zero. It's not why it's not centered. Maybe they changed the default here. I don't know. We'll figure out that later. Also, while I while I'm here, I have a material and I need to set the uniforms for the material. And well, let's do that. Uniforms playhead value equals playhead. So now I have it in my vertex and fragment shader. I can just use playhead here, and I can use the same playhead here. Not that I need it, but well, I can multiply this by the playhead and see something weird, probably, like a growing spiral, which is kind of beautiful by itself, but not what I'm heading to. I think to also see the spiral, the whole spiral, I need to create this. And also transparent from. So now we have this file. We could see it growing, changing its thickness. It's beautiful, isn't it? Alrighty. So I think that's it for the vertex shader, and we have to continue to the fragment shader. I don't really need this growing part anymore. Still, what the hell with the 
with the camera it's like it's not really centered something like this it's like i'm not looking at the zero point somehow or maybe my my whole object is not centered in a zero point but why all right i have no idea and um, it's still a perfect spiral okay next thing we need to colorize this color for this i would use the amazing stream that martin did about the truche tiling explained this is the name of the video i really advise you to look at it and i'll try to replicate his code real fast so you get the idea and so it kind of contains in this whole stream and for this i would go to the shader toy create a new shader yeah we have the uvs now kind of i'm gonna make it bigger yep so uh, to create a simple true shape we need to create a simple grid first and for this i would just create another Kind of set of uvs like a new uv equals uv multiplied by let's say six and then i would like to see this uv here i don't need it oh no i need it yeah it's just a zero yeah but we obviously don't see it because the value getting bigger than one so this way we could see the uvs so we got the grid and then i i think i would also need the hash function the function to get the random number for each grid so then let's start by by creating the id of each of my grid it, it is also a nice thing to create a centroid grid you know if you should really check out the martin video because he does a real good job in explaining it and me doing it live i'll just try to guess uh, and by the error and it, by, by error and by try and error the correct way of doing this so the guv is going to be equal the fract of nuv minus 0 0.5 This is the same thing, just without the, just without the zero point. Okay. And then to, to write, to get the ID of each cell, I would need to make a, a module from the floor. I don't actually need the module yet could just get the floor from the NUV or GUV, I think NUV. And we can try to preview this ID, divided by 10 or something. I think the ID should be two dimensional actually, yeah. Because we have two coordinates for each cell. Now we see this kind of a grid growing. That means that each cell has a unique number associated with it right now. I mean, two, two numbers, which is a unique two-dimensional vector. Right. So then, then I need the hash function. Uh, where do I get this hash function? I could write my own, of course, but... I think I just recently talked with a Joe about that and I would just get the link from, from my tweet because we exchanged that there probably hope so yeah that's a shader toy which I'm trying to recreate, I just need the hash function, really. 
I kind of wanna, even though we have this code online somewhere, I kind of wanna recreate it myself. So this has function actually just generates a random number from zero to one based on the two-dimensional vector. So it has two to one. So it creates uh, one dimensional from two dimensions. And then I need to create uh, this hash, obviously this random number, float n equals hash out of id, because id is a unique number. So this means now that we have this uh, random number for each cell. Let's see it. Yeah, we have the random number for each cell right now. And we will create something out of it. So this, this button, let me tell you a bit of a history about this one. This button that you see in, uh, in my shader is actually a kind of famous button. It's called Trusche tiles. It actually originates in the 18th century. And the nice thing about this button is it actually created with just two tiles. Just, you just randomly turn those two tiles and you get the button. So you get this out of just two random tiles. That's what I'm trying to do right now. I'm trying to create those, these two random tiles based on this random number I just generated and just stick them to this grid. And that's it. You can, you can actually create the true chatel and with the triangle, triangles and you get something like this. It's also beautiful and it's actually 18th century, almost 17th century. So it's a cool thing to do. You should try it. Then, okay, let's continue our quest for this button. And I might actually create a different kind of button in this particular stream. Because I already created the rounded one, but there's a triangular one, which I kind of want to see how it will look like. So we have this random number right now for each cell. And we'll use it later. Now we need to draw those two circles or maybe just uh, lines inside of each, uh, of each cell. So I'll create the distance, uh, some distance value. And this distance value is going to be absolute from GUV X plus GUV Y. And this number will be growing from well this number grows from zero to okay this goes from this goes from zero to one so this goes from minus 0 0.5 to plus 0 0.5 so these both go from minus 0 0.5 to plus 0 0.5 so this is minus one one and Taking the absolute, it's 0 to 1. So I might subtract this and let's see what it looks like actually. I'm doing too much math blindly. So we're kind of approaching what we need to do. Not yet there. I think I, I would need to take the absolute of this value too. Yes, now we got the diagonals. And now this, this the last thing to do is to use this n thing. So I would just flip the one of the axes is one of the axes when the n is bigger or smaller than some value so to do this i would just do the guv uh, which i think it's gonna be the x axis multiplied by something which should be either one or minus one depending on this value so to do some kind of if minus one or one I would just need to do the 0 0.5 and step function. So this is going to be 0 or 1. Mm. So now if I multiply this by 2 and subtract 1, it's going to be either 1 or minus 1. So this is 0 or 1. If it's 0, it's minus 1. If it's 1, it's 2 minus 1, it's 1. So it flips the, flips the coordinate system inside of each grid cell depending on this random value. And this is what you get. This is actually already looking good. And I would just do the mask equals uh, uh, 
something small. Yeah, we're getting there. Yeah, so maybe in this stream, I, I, I want to see how this button looks like in my curve. This should be random each time, but this random is actually pretty... Well, it's defined, it's not really a random. So if I'm getting... Yeah, maybe this one is more beautiful. Okay. So now I need to use this inside my fragment shader and do something with this inside my spiral, right? So now we have the spiral. Let's create the grid. We have the UVs. So let's copy paste all this code here. But instead of the NUV, I'm going to be using VUV here, which is the correct UVs. And it all broke down because why? Probably some syntax error. Hash 21, yeah, of course. Of course, of course, of course. Now we have it, but it doesn't show anything yet. Let's preview our mask function. It's kind of working, but not really, right? The first of all, it's quite blurry. Second of all, it's not really, it's too big. It gets better now. I think I like this part even more than the round, rounded one. But you know, we have this bug that uh, UV speed or the precision of the spiral is actually different on each turn. This is why we get also this shit inside of it. And the thing that I think could fix this is instead of a, um, one of the UVs that I'm using, I'm gonna use the angle, the actual angle of the curve. And to do this, I have to use varying Orion V position and then V position equals new pos. Yeah, that's right. And then I will get the angle here. Uh, float angle equals A10 V position Y V position X. This is getting an angle of each point I'm drawing now. And then, and then, instead of doing this, I will create the two-dimensional vector. And one part of this two-dimensional vector is going to be <laughs> this angle, probably. Well, first of all, let's see how this angle looks like. Uh, angle. It's not really going from zero to one because this function returns me minus pi divided by 2 plus pi divided by 2. No, no, it's minus pi to plus pi. So I have to add... I have to add pi to this one and then divide it by 2 pi. And this should get me a 0 to 1 range. Yeah, it does. So it starts from 0, which is red, and goes to the black, which is... It's the other way, never mind. And then, now we could create this correct UV for the, for the pattern, and it's gonna be, what's it gonna be? Uh, 8 multiplied by an angle, and then UV Y, which is the correct one, multiplied by 5, maybe. Yeah, now we need to preview the mask. Yeah, there we have it. But now we have to multiply this all by something big, like six more. Yes, yeah, so now we have the pattern. It's actually almost good. Mm. 
And the other thing you, you want to do to re make it repeatable is I could actually do this. So instead of generating a unique ID for each cell, I could just repeat them with the... So I'll use 6 as a period because I already multiplied this by 6. And yeah, so this partner should be repeating now. You can't see that yet. Now let's do something else. So we're almost there. So if uh, mask is less than something really small, just discard. So now we see the pattern through. I think I would also should make it more thin. This is thicker and more precise. And to make it look better, I think I would also need to do So if the surface is not front facing towards me, I would just make it more transparent. Yeah, so now it looks beautiful from the inside out. I don't think I need it to be red. And I think I would like to make the transparency of the mask too. So now it's all white. Almost there. So now we have the rotating thing. The other thing we need to do, we need to preserve the position of the texture now. And to do that, I would just add something to my angle. So I already have the playhead. And let's just add the playhead here. It's moving, but it's too slow. Like six. Yeah, see, it looks much different now. Now it's starting to do some crazy things. All right. So we just have to guess the correct speed, so it kind of looks maybe 10. That's too big. I think it should have been 6. Maybe this one smaller a bit. And the other thing we need to do, we need to make a we need to make move the pattern the other way around too. So we're gonna just add the playhead here. It's not the pattern moves, but it's too slow. It might be the other way. Yeah, there we go. I think we're almost there. With the white, it doesn't look quite good with the white though. I don't know. Maybe a bit of a gray make it better but that's actually it <laughs> we just created this animation we just need to find now an angle in which to look at the, this whole thing now i still have to figure out like why my camera is doing such weird stuff why is it not being rotated right mm. I guess something, something has changed inside my template. Which point is actually looking? What if I do this here? It's like, okay, it's like zero point is not in the center. Anyway, maybe I shouldn't, white was good enough. Maybe I could also make this animation duration a bit longer so it looks better. Yeah, now we have this button. 
just a matter of a couple of lines to create it around the corners, but I kind of like it this way. So the gap is not really constant here, but I think it's it's like it's growing the same way, and it's actually interesting. Is it the is it the bug or is it the correct behavior that the gap is actually kind of proportional to the uh, thickness of the spiral even though the spiral is just an extruded logarithmic spiral and then the thickness of the spiral is actually linearly changing so it's like a thickness of the usual spiral so the thickness is growing like this which is just a linear function but we then get like almost right gap at each step of the curve which is kind of cool. Yeah, of course we could add something like this too, maybe diffusion lightning. And now I will need the V normal thing. And we all need to multiply this by diffusion now. Which will get me a nice shadow effect. Well, I think it looks cool enough. Cool enough to me. This is a pretty damn cool thing. And it's not that hard to do actually. Of course, there's some real complicated math involved, but it's still a pretty cool thing to do. And I really encourage you to go and create your own true shade tiling. You can do it in a shader, you can do it in anything, and just watch this video by Martin. Subscribe to him. This is one of the best shader channels out there. And you can learn a lot there. And also, Go and check out the Joe GIFs, he's doing a pretty good job with the GIFs. Mind blowing, I should say. And he inspired me to recreate his this GIF, like with what I did myself, trying to do some other math functions and recreate it. Well, I hope you like that. Haven't looked at the chat for a while. That's a shitload of math. Yeah, that's why I like it. That's why I like it. It's not really a shitload. Once you grasp the main principles, it's pretty straightforward there. But it's beautiful, isn't it? It's beautiful. I wish I could be that creative so I could come up with those ideas myself, I'm not just seeing someone's idea and then trying to create on top. Hope you like this. Hope you like this. I, I just need I just need to make those transitions again because they are really cool. <laughs> yeah. And this again. Well, if you like it, you can support me on Patreon. You can pin me with an idea of the course. Maybe I'm still thinking about how I should do that and which platform and etc. etc. Otherwise, I'm wishing you a good day. Call your parents, call, contact your close ones, let them know you love them, let everybody know you love them, and create something beautiful. Enjoy your life, guys. I'll stay in the chat for a while. You can also subscribe me on the Twitter if you haven't yet, but probably you all came from the Twitter anyway. I will announce all the other streams there too. So hopefully we'll have a stream next week. I don't know what's gonna happen next. Yeah, it's well, it it uh, almost a shader. There's actually a, a new startup by Inihokiles who just did the startup Memix company, and this is actually adding shaders to your web camera so you could just connect shaders to your web camera you could do ray marching you could do any kind of crazy stuff 
it didn't work with the OBS with my streaming software. Unfortunately, it keeps crashing. But I'm really looking forward <laughs> to live code myself on a stream with the shaders. And I think this is a real cool thing. Well, at least I like it. So go check it out. Install it for Windows. You can use it with Zoom, by the way, so you can write your shaders and surprise your colleagues with the Zoom shader. So go try it. Have a nice day, guys. See you.